So in our bathymetry case, we had no problem, but so in this case, we didn't even come close to hitting it. This was just eight megabytes. Um, but the large ones, for instance, I have some very large ones here of building footprints. Oh, it's not very large, it's just 33. But I've worked with some that are hundreds and hundreds of megabytes. And you do have to um, simplify them a little. So we're going to go over a little bit about how you simplify. So there's another great tool out there that's called mapshaper.org. And here you can upload a shapefile, a GeoJSON, or even other types of files, TopoJSON, DBF, blah, blah, blah. So there's all this stuff. So let's upload our shapefile. Obviously, it was quite complicated. Here's all the data. It loaded very quickly, very quickly, and just shows that there are some places where the lines perhaps intersect or there's some kind of issue with the data. I can zoom in and out and see it. You can see there's no underlying map. So it's a little hard to work with if it's just some random data. But if it's a piece like this where you kind of know what you're looking at, it makes a lot of sense. So this is quite nice. And we maybe don't need this level of detail for what we're doing. We're not doing like scientific analysis. It's just a fun map. So I can go up here to simplify. And there's all this details. You can try some different ones. I wouldn't worry about it too much. And here you can see I can simplify it down. So if I simplify it all the way to the bottom, I just get a bunch of pretty cool looking kind of abstract art things and all the way up to the very complex level of detail so you can see that I can kind of guess like okay I'm gonna be zooming at I'm gonna have my users normally zooming at about this level maximum that they're not gonna go much farther than that and maybe that data I'll want it around there so around 20% of its original so if I now export that and very nice map shaper will also be able to change your data for you. For instance, if you could upload a GeoJSON and get out a shapefile, or upload a shapefile and get out a GeoJSON, whatever you need, even an SVG, so that's like an image file. Um, so it's really handy, this this site. So if we export that, now we can see just how large it is now. See, it's two megabytes, which would be expected as about 20% of the original. The original was eight. So that makes, you know, 25, 20, we're pretty close. So that's a really great tool for simplifying them down to get them um, just right. And there's also command line tools to do the same thing with files that would be too large um, to handle this. And that same tool, Tippecanoe, is also, that's what it's called, is also going to help us with that zoom problem that we ran into before. Mapbox mentions it a few times. So, oh, they actually maintain it. Okay, so there you go. So Tippecanoe is this way that we can modify these um, different types of files. So this, this tool involves a little bit more work to actually get it installed. Um, on OS X, they, so on Mac, they, they recommend doing it with uh, Homebrew, which you may have to also install, which is kind of a pain that you also have to do that. So unfortunately, Tippecanoe is a Mac-only thing that Mapbox has put out. So that's a bit of a hassle if you're using Windows, obviously. You may have to just use Map Shaper, but I want to show you this because this is actually Mapbox's recommended tool when it comes to some problems with Zoom. Uh, maybe you'll be able to fi fix some of the same issues using Mapbox Classic. We're going to go over that in the next video. Uh, but for this one, we're just going to go and, and just go through it on OS X. Okay, so Tippecanoe has installed to adjust the zoom extent of our tile sets. So that has to do with how our tile set was disappearing when we got to a certain um, spot with it. <clears throat> and now our users can't see the bathymetry at all. Now if I had a huge bathymetry file and it was covering all this and it was only viewable down at that zoom level, that's really unfortunate and it kind of ruins the fact that we found the data at all. So this is a problem that a lot of people run into when they first start using Mapbox, and it's a little confusing to know how to handle this. Um, so this is the zoom extent, and you can actually see it selecting the data. And you can see here, it says here that the zoom is 0 to 22, so that means it's encompassing the whole thing. So you can see that this part of uh, the style interface thinks that this thing can be seen at all levels, but if we go out go to tile sets, go over to Lake Erie contours here, we can see on the side it says zoom extent Z8 to Z14. So data will not be visible below zoom 8. So with a low zoom, so low zoom is when uh, we're really zoomed out, 
uh, we're not going to see it. So let's see, around zoom 8. So let's see if we can actually make that happen in here and actually watch our zoom extent. So here we are, higher than 8, and right around 8. There it breaks. Okay, so we know that that's actually that's how it works. Now map box, again, we're back here. Uh, adjust the zoom extent of your tile set. So you can just look that up. You can adjust to uh, zoom extent, but we're going to go over it. <coughs> you may notice your data is not rendered to all zoom levels. Yes, that's what we saw. And basically we have to reformat it. Um, it's kind of complicated why this happens, but it's just a matter of just how big the data is ultimately. So we're going to use Tippecanoe to do this um, MB tiles and basically turn that GeoJSON MB tiles instead. And uh, I'm just going to run this so Lake Erie Contours, but you can have whatever you want. And I'm going to change this command, which is setting the new zoom extent here from the min maximum, sorry, the low zoom. It's from the minimum zoom of 2 to the maximum zoom of 7. So I want it to be 8, just so it covers that space in between. I could make it all 16 um, or all 22 from the very lowest zoom of 1 to the very highest zoom of 22, but it's going to take a long time to create all those. In fact, it, and it could be huge. It could be like hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes in size, depending on how big your file is. So try to do the minimum. I can combine the two layers, um, and we're going to do that. So I'm just going to run through this here. All right, so we have an MB tiles now, and we go back to Mapbox. We can go to Tile Sets. And then we can upload that MB tiles. Okay, so now that it's loaded, we should have our uh, new layer available. So we're going to head to our style, back to our course. And let's, uh, well, I guess I should let it load a little bit here. Let it load, and we're going to add our new tile set. So right now we have this tile set that disappears. Let's see if we can add one that shows up. So where is it? I have to find it. It's always a little fun when you have so many. Ah, uh, here they are. How is this? All right, so this one is showing up. We're going to be going over all these details on all this styling stuff later on. So don't worry if you're a little overwhelmed right now. <clears throat> We're just going over the data. Okay, so here we are. We have the data. And as we go out, we see it. It, it might have some differences in the quality of it, but it's not very noticeable. And what's really nice is now we have it available at these different zoom levels. So we can zoom way out, and now it's available. Now this is a really common thing, and I hope that these sections have helped you. Um, I would really recommend getting a hold and using Map Shaper in a variety of ways. Um, if you're command line oriented, or if you kind of know more about um, geographic data, Map Shaper has an extensive Wikipedia documentation. I'd recommend you look into that. Um, so between Tippecanoe and Map Shaper, you should be able to get together your really big shape files into something that is manageable and that you can upload and uh, use in Mapbox. So, see you in the next episode.